famously, Wittgenstein finishes his book by, by saying that we must throw away the ladder after we've climbed up it. Now, the ladder is philosophy and we need to sort of throw it away. That's, that's, his, that's his goal. How does he want to achieve that? Well, he says, he presents this account of representation, which I discuss in my book of how we represent the world. And then he argues that because representation works like that, representation has its limits. There are representations that we thought we were able to produce, which, as it turns out, he teaches us we can't produce. There are limits to what we can represent. Now, an account of representation, an explanation of the phenomenon of representation, is itself a representation. You are representing representation. And that sort of second order representation that uh, the book engages in falls outside the scope of the kinds of represent representations that he says we can produce. So we reach a paradox. He's convinced us that a certain account of representation is the correct one. And then he's convinced us that that account of representation, like any other, is impossible. Any attempt to produce a representation of representation is going to end in nonsense. What does that mean? It means that the rules that define the activity that we call philosophy seem to be incoherent because they designate the same account as both correct and nonsensical. And he expects that out of that uh, realization we will come to abandon philosophy, like a disease that we've cured ourselves of, which is exactly what he went on to do uh, as soon as he finished the book. He abandon, abandoned philosophy, uh, became a school teacher and a gardener and a bit of an architect, um, thinking that uh, he had sort of overcome this disease of philosophy. Of course, in a couple of decades later, he came back to philosophy uh, to produce equally important work, but that's, that's another story. That's not, that's not what my book is about.